Let me illustrate to you how lazy I used to be with this little short story. It's 2020, my rock bottom, and it's January. I want to make something happen because I want to start a business. So I sleep up until around 11 a.m. and I think I should wake up, I should start my work. What do I do? I scroll on my phone for about an hour. I watch a bunch of YouTube videos. I waste a bunch of time. Then I decide it's finally time to go to my desk. But instead of going to my desk, I decide it's time to make breakfast. And I make a massive full English breakfast, procrastinating essentially. And in that breakfast, there's a bunch of carbs and crap that prevents me from being able to focus and actually makes me tired again after I eat it. After I finish the breakfast, you know, I'm eating the breakfast and I'm watching a YouTube video. Whilst this YouTube video is going on, I finish my breakfast, but instead of, you know, getting to work, I decide to finish the YouTube video. And then even after that YouTube video is finished, I had multiple monitors, right? I had two monitors. On my side monitor was the work I was doing. On the monitor in front of me was the game I was playing whilst I was working on my dreams. And in front of me, on the desk, placed was my phone with a YouTube video playing. One second, just gotta take this off. It's getting really hot in here for some reason. England's decided to have another summer. It's sunny outside, it's warm, it's 20 degrees Celsius, and it's, you know, the tail end of October. I have no idea what's going on. But anyway, how does a person like me, who went from that... By the way, I don't think I could focus for more than 30 seconds back then. I'd look at my work monitor, I'd read like two sentences, write like two lines of code because I was learning web development at the time. And then I'd get distracted and I'd watch the YouTube video or I'd go back to my game. How did I go from that to building two $10,000 a month businesses? Now, the obvious answers that everyone is going to give you is read Deep Work by Carl Newport. It's a very good book. Sort your life out, quit all your addictions, exercise because it actually helps you focus. Do all these things, but these things, they take a while. They take a long time to build up and get good at. You already know all that stuff, so what can you do right now to actually start getting your work done? And that's what we're gonna be talking about in this video. But before we get started, look, let's be honest. You're done with your job. You don't want to take the traditional path. You want time, location, and financial freedom. And the best way that I can help you with that is working one-to-one -one with you. I help people do that. Just the other day, one of my clients made $1,500 with his offer that I helped him build in four days. So click the link below to start working with me. Now, the first thing you can do to ensure you get your work done, and it doesn't matter what stage of learning to focus properly you're on, is to wake up and do the work as early as possible. This is because your mind is clear of distractions at the start of the day. When you wake up, you have a certain amount of willpower points and those willpower points have not been drained yet at all. That means you are far less likely to get distracted. Every time you pick up your phone and you drain some of your dopamine reserves, you have less willpower and your willpower gets reset every time you wake up in the morning. So work as close as possible to when you wake up. Now, you may be saying, Brian, I can't do that. I'm a lazy fuck. Well, you're in luck because I was a lazy fuck too. And the way I circumvented that, because let's be honest, if you're anything like I was, you are not going to wake up early unless something makes you get up. And that's exactly what we are going to do. Find a reason to make you have to get up. For example, right now, the first thing I actually do is I go to the gym, but I do it in a way which makes me go early and then get my work done as quickly as possible. Let me explain. My calls with my clients start at 8 a.m. sharp, which means I need to be back home from the gym at 8 a.m. I am forced to wake up at 5 a.m. to make that happen. And I make that time schedule 
quite tight on purpose. To top it off, when I'm in the UK, which I am right now, I live right next to a school. So if I decide, if I don't have one of those calls with clients on that morning to sleep in, if I sleep in even just 15 minutes, it means I will be stuck in the school traffic. I won't get my parking spot that I have by my house, which means my whole morning is going to be thrown off. And that's enough. The thought of that is painful enough in my head and it makes me get up early. So get up early, even if it's before work and find a reason, whatever that is for you, to force yourself to do that. Now, this kind of ties into my next point and it's that you have to create artificial urgency with your work. Now, you might not know what that is, and I'm pretty sure I coined this term, but it's helped me get so much more work done than I otherwise would back when I wasn't disciplined, I couldn't focus, back when I was still building up those skills. And it's essentially, I mean, do you remember when, back when you were at school and you would put off your assignments, you would put off your homework, and then it got to the day before, do you remember just how powerful that boost of motivation was to work? You could probably focus for like five hours just to knock it out and get it done the night before. No problem, right? Well, this focus still exists within you if you create that same fake urgency. Now, the first way to do this as an entrepreneur who is pursuing their own ventures is to just get really consistent. Back when I first started posting YouTube, I had a four day split of making a video. I would plan it on day one, record it on day two, edit it on day three, and upload it on day four. I got so used to that schedule that not doing it became extremely painful. And I actually never missed a day of this. So for some people, just getting really consistent and being afraid to break it might be enough. But if it isn't, I have some more things up my sleeve. So just you wait. The other thing that you can do is get an accountability buddy. When there's someone else expecting you to do something like your teachers in the past, but even if it's someone else, like a friend, you are way more compelled to do it within yourself. Because if no one can see that you haven't done it, it doesn't matter as much to us, right? Especially if we're, you know, coming from this background of being lazy. So get a friend, tell him to watch your YouTube channel and just watch your upload schedule and tell him that if you miss an upload, you owe him $50. Every time you miss an upload, you owe that person $50. You will be way more likely to upload a video. You can do that, but any form of promising a deadline publicly is very powerful. Like now I say to my audience, you on YouTube, I always post videos on Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Saturdays. I haven't missed one of those uploads in an extremely long time. Actually, since I've started this upload schedule, I have never missed a day. And another time this really worked well for me is when I was releasing my Steam game on my other channel, the one from that plaque. I feel like I say those words every video, the one that that plaque is from. But anyway, when I was releasing that game, I publicly committed to the deadline of the 20th of October. And in the months, in the weeks leading up to the release of that product, there was just so many problems coming up and I was working my ass off. Coming from this lazy background, I still haven't worked out uh, at that point, all of the kinks in my productivity, right? I still wasn't as focused as I wanted to be. But when I had this deadline looming and there was genuinely millions of people like watching the devlogs of this game that I was releasing. It just, it made me work, no word of a lie, over 12 hours a day for a month straight, all just off my own back with no one watching me except this idea of this massive audience. As long as the idea of not doing it is more painful than the idea of just getting it done, then you're on the right track. And there's many, many ways to do this. For example, right now, it's 3.15 p.m. I have an onboarding call with a new client that I signed on at 4 p.m. And straight after that call, I'm supposed to be seeing someone, right? They're expecting me to come at a certain time. So there is literally no other option. I have to get this video out by 4 p.m. 
and it just it helps me a lot to have these sort of things even now now this next thing i'm about to mention i don't think has ever been talked about before in this sort of space and i call it standalone entertainment now if you value your freedom escaping your job and not having to work one like i do and you want to maximize your focus and your success at the expense of maybe some other things in your life, you will have to make sacrifices, right? This is a great thing to do. Standalone entertainment. Things like films, seeing friends. When I was in Asia, it was day trips. Basically, things that don't have any continuity. You go and you do it, you have fun whilst you're doing it, like a film. Like the film starts, it lasts for however long it lasts, and then it finishes, and then you just stop thinking about it. Things that don't hold your attention for any longer than you're actually doing them for. Now, I say this because I have quite an addictive personality. And when I have a TV show that I really like, or I have a game that I really like, I can't just spend an hour a day on it. It's all or nothing. I'm either playing that game 10 hours a day or I'm not playing it at all. I'm either watching that show every single second that I've got, or I'm not watching it at all. If you have this personality trait, then you will really benefit from this. You want your mind to be as clear as possible. If you're addicted to a game, even if you play it a few hours per day, and business is your priority, you want to, you don't want like 50% of your mental real estate being spent thinking about a game. You want most of your real estate, if not all of your mental real estate being spent thinking about your business. And it's also important to touch on the fact that, especially if you're addicted to things and you spend too long doing them, you're using a lot of your dopamine reserves, right? Too much dopamine doesn't just waste your time whilst you're watching the show. You're also a lot less likely to find work fun and you're going to find focusing a lot more difficult. And I guess it comes down to making the decision, right? What is more important to you? Your freedom, moving to a place like Thailand, living life on your own terms or a TV show? When you think of it that way, I think the answer is obvious. That's all I have in this video. As always, if you're done with answering to a manager, if you want your freedom back, you want to be able to travel, you want to be able to provide for your family better, you want to live on your own terms, then I can help you with that. Click the link below and I will teach you everything you need to know personally about making money online. Otherwise, I will see you in the next video.